Okay, <laughs> we've, we've seen how that matrix worked in a revision type way, like a, a mapping backwards. Some, so many, what we need to now see is how do I make a matrix for yourselves? So what, I, what happens sometimes is, I'll, as an ESL teacher, I'll have a, one child, one student <clears throat> doing business studies. Another student will be doing chemistry. Another one will be doing another subject. And we'll look at one person's question, who, and the boy or girl won't understand it, but the boy opposite will look and go, it means this. And then he'll look over at the other person's paper and go, oh, that's how you answer that. They seem to understand each other's questions, but they don't understand their own. It's so, so funny. As a means to help this learning community happen, especially for the logical subjects, is to see how do I make a matrix for any of the logical subjects? Because if I can make it for one, I can make it for all. So what I have here are a series of questions. Yeah, I've just taken, not at random, but I've chosen them. <clears throat> they have different marks, they come from different places. But what you have to understand is, yes, the content will be different, but the skill to answer them, according to this matrix, will be the same. You, should, you can also see that the question is actually helping you to organize one and answer. But there's something else. When I'm teaching something, as I said, I sometimes think of the big end question I'm trying to get to. These are big end questions. Yeah? They're, they're sort of that deep end question that, I, that maybe you think of down the line. That's really what I want them to learn. If you can figure out what you want them to learn, you can map it backwards and just see, oh, those are the parts and pieces. And then it becomes your forward map of teaching. You'll see what I mean when I go through this, but hopefully you'll also see how to make a matrix for yourselves by looking at it as if you have to learn this. That's where I want to take you to, is if you can map this, any one of these questions, and I found this for myself, I suddenly said, I could learn this. And when a child says that, when a student says, I could learn this, you've got them. It's really something to hear a kid say, well, I could learn that. Whether they want to or not is another story. But can I help them see how to learn it? So I've just written them up on the board just to look at the first one. Discuss the use of feedback during the stages of skill acquisition. So, just like I said, underline the verb. As soon as I see the use, I know that's, that's got to go evaluative level. And that's all the content I should have learned. So I said, look, discuss the use of feedback during the stages of skill item. Stages. How many stages were there? I think there are three. Stage one, stage two, stage three. It's already informing me what I have to teach or what I have to write in my answer. The stage of skill acquisition and feedback. So during stage one, there's feedback. Feedback, corresponding feedback for each stage. I go through. And I say, what are the details of the, feed, of the stage? What are the details of the feedback? What is the feedback trying to achieve for that stage? How is it going to work? And then I draw this magic line. Well, what are the positives of using this type of feedback at this stage? What are the negatives if I don't? And I can go, therefore. Number two, and I work it the same way. Until finally, when I add all that up down here, I can answer the question, why is it important to have particular, appropriate feedback for each stage? Does that make sense? And once you see that, I, I have my whole teaching program. And the kid goes, oh, that's the answer. There's my sentences, there's my paragraphs. And I have a structure 
and I'm completing everything necessary for that question. Does that make sense? So when a, when a child or a student sees that, they go, I could learn that. Look at number two I drove up here. <clears throat> Describe, oh, I'll rub these out. Okay, skills the same, content different. Describe two parenting styles. Parenting style one, parenting style two. So it says two parenting styles. Maybe there's more in the whole program. And examine, oh, two verbs. So now I'm going to describe two parenting styles. That verb takes me to that point. I'm going to describe them. The next verb says examine the impact. Uh-oh. I've got to make an evaluation that the impact has, and the question reads, on the parent-child relationship. Parent-child, so the relationship. So here's my parenting style. Here's the details of that parenting style. Here's what it, the impact is or what it's trying to achieve. That's how it works. Is this parenting style positive? on the relationship, or is it negative on the relationship? Does that make sense? And then I can just say, oh, therefore, that parenting style and that has this particular degree of impact. So the question is actually helping me see what I can write. <clears throat> if in the beginning I've learned with this template the template just slots in to the answer, if I understand this question. Number three. See, I'm just, just changing what goes in there. So every subject right across the curriculum, if they're following this, skills, this structure of skill setting, <laughs> yeah, then maybe they can transfer from PDHPE into community and family. And maybe from community and family, they can go into uh, IT. And if you see the rest of the questions, geography, economics, it doesn't matter the, su the, the uh, particular subject. It just matters, can they, do they have the skill of seeing what it's asking for in the question? Analyze the structural. If you look at that question, is there a value judgment word there? If so, what is it? Because this is what's gonna, this is what's gonna s separate the marks into the higher marks, lower marks. Is there a value judgment word in number, in analyze? The effect, the effectiveness, no, 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 sorry. Analyze the structural, technical, and personal issues to be considered prior to relocating and expanding. Is there a value judgment word there? Most teachers find the word consider. That's a value judgment. I would consider it because I think it's, it's important. Now, if the student doesn't know that, and it's out of 12 marks, if he doesn't have why consider it, these positive and negatives, his marks will probably stop 8, 9. He won't get the 10, 11, 12. Once I show him the, or her the, um, the particular value judgment words, you're sort of helping them see how far they have to go. So, I have structural, technical, personal. Same thing. Structural has these details. This is what it's trying to achieve. Yeah? Prior to relocating. This is how you achieve it. This is why it's beneficial to do it. What does it contribute to? What does it promote? How does it help? If you don't do it before relocating, this is going to be uh, the detrimental side of things. And therefore, now you can measure the importance of that. Why consider it? And you can do each one on its own. If I'm teaching the whole topic, I'll come down to here and say, why is it important to take certain things into consideration? Why is it important to evaluate them? Does that make sense? And so what I was trying to do here is with 
with these particular questions, each one, yeah, could be broken up. There's number three, science, 2009 school certificate exam. I edited it a little bit, seven marks. And it says, some alternative energy sources are nuclear energy, boom, nuclear, wind, solar. I immediately now know the content of my subject. Yeah? Analyze the environmental impacts. Oh, I know I have to talk about are these impacts going to be, are they going to help the environment or harm the environment? I immediately know I have to go that far. Then, I just read the rest of the question. Analyze the environmental impacts of replacing fossil fuels. Fossil fuels. With alternative sources of energy. So these are the alternative. That's the fossil fuel I need to study. That will become number one, two, three, four in my programming. And then I take it all the way out. I want to mention this next one. I'll mention something else with this next one. In economics. Have a look at the economics question. And it says, <clears throat> analyze the effectiveness. Effectiveness is out here. So I know how far, I have, how deep I have to go of the fiscal monetary policy in achieving Australia's economic objectives. Here's the policy, here's the objective. So every subject taught to these big end questions can just follow the same way, the same method, the same progression of skills to help them fill in the content along the way. It doesn't matter the subject, and like I say, right from the beginning, maybe they'll transfer this skill from one subject to the next. I remember there was one time our PDH, PE teacher was marking some papers, and I was eavesdropping, and I heard her say, look at this, I have two classes. One class, they put all the positives down, no negatives. The other class has none of the above. The one class got nines and tens out of twelve, the other class were getting sixes and sevens, maybe eights. But they couldn't get to the other limit, and I, I asked, that, the class that put in the positives, who were they? And I heard who they were, and went, huh, I went into their society and culture class last week. So they'd immediately, from one showing this them, to them once, they were able to transfer it to their other subject, get the marks, better marks than they would have got before. We didn't know why they didn't put down the negatives though. So the teacher went and asked the class, and she said, why didn't you put, you put all the positives, but you didn't put any negatives. And the kid said, oh, we didn't know we were supposed to put bad things down. And I go, no, it's not like it's bad. It's just negative. You've got to find which one outweighs the other so I can make a judgment. And that's how I'm trying to help kids in any subject. The content may change from year 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 to university to further study about anything in life. But these skills, we're giving these, this skill set. Hopefully that'll help them.